Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. Welcome to another artistic effect video tutorial in our Lightroom video tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to create a vintage cross process look right in Lightroom. So let's get right started. I have loaded up my exercise file catalog and I've selected image number two. Now, you guys can uh, work off these exercise files. You can also select a different image if you like, um, but I feel like this image is going to work really well as a vintage cross-process photo. So we're going to use this image. We've selected our color corrected snapshot, um, which basically we did in the color correction chapter. So if you have any questions on how we got to this point, just refer to that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit F twice so I can load up my screen full screen, just give us a little bit of extra screen real estate. I'm also going to hit F5 to shrink my top panel and then F6 to shrink my film strip so we have as much working space as possible. All right, so let's briefly discuss the characteristics of a vintage cross-process photo. Now, first of all, a vintage image is typically going to be characterized by having kind of muted overall contrast. So the contrast is really going to be pulled down. Uh, the blacks aren't going to be very deep, and the highlights aren't going to be very highlighty. They're going to be kind of pulled down into the mid-tone range so that the overall contrast is overall just kind of muted. Uh, the next thing is that these, t these vintage images typically fade over time, so our colors are less vibrant, less saturated. So that's the kind of the first two effects of a vintage image that we're going to recreate. Also, vintage images often have grain effects, uh, vignetting, and stuff like that, which is optional if we want to recreate. Now, a cross-process photo is characterized by typically you're kind of adding uh, different colors into highlights and shadow areas. Uh, more often than not, for most cross-process images, you're seeing basically reds and greens increased in the highlights and pulled down in the shadows, and then blues pulled down in the highlights and increased in the shadows. And that kind of gives you that nice, uh, that nice cross-process look. So let's go ahead and begin in recreating these steps. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to lower my black to zero and my contrast all the way to negative 50. We're going to start here and then we'll come back to this uh, later on towards the end of the tutorial to kind of add back a little bit of contrast where needed. But let's, let's start with that and we already get kind of a nice faded uh, appearance to this photo. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add fill light because I want to, fill light kind of serves to brighten up uh, the kind of the more shadowy areas of the image. Um, it, it affects really the more of the foreground, tries to keep the, the highlights in like the sky and everything like that. And so what it's going to tend to do is it's going to bring up your mid-tones and shadows while retaining the highlights. And that's overall going to kind of smooth out uh, mid-tone contrast, so our mid-tones are more flat. All right, next thing I'm going to do is pull down the exposure so it's not so bright. And so now you can see we kind of have this overall, uh, we're just kind of tone mapping the image so that all the tone fits into the mid-tone channel. So we're killing the contrast basically. So we're going to further kill contrast by we're going to pull down the mid-tones a little bit more and we're also going to pull down our highlights because we want to bring these highlights down even further so that they kind of match uh, the mid-tone area. Alright, and then from there we're going to also pull up our shadows and this is going to, again, we're bringing up uh, the shadows, pulling down the, the mid-tones and the highlights and that's kind of muting overall contrast. All right, and this looks good so far. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our cross-processing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to split toning, and then we're going to add colors. We're going to add kind of an orangey color to the highlights and the blue color to the shadows. Why are we adding orange to the highlights? Well, we mentioned again how reds and greens are kind of added in the highlights, and red and green added together, if you guys are familiar with their primary colors, gives you kind of a yellow-orange look. So we're going to add this little yellow orange look by just clicking in this color panel. We're going to select kind of in between this area right here. This is between yellow and orange. Um, you guys can kind of choose where you want. The more left you're going to go, it's the more red it's going to be. The more right it's going to hit yellow and it's going to fade more to green, which we don't want to really go to green. So I want it to be more in this range. And the higher I go, the more saturated. The lower I go, the less saturated. Don't worry about getting it perfect because we can make adjustments to this. That's kind of the beauty of Lightroom is we can just make adjustments on top of things that we've already done. So let's select this color for now. We're going to close that and let's go to our shadows and select a blue. I'm just going to pick right here and this looks about right. Again, I'm not too worried about the balance because we're going to adjust the balance right now to kind of give it the right look. So what I want to do is I see too much blues right now so I kind of want to pull this up a little bit to kind of give me just a little bit of that uh, orangey look in my highlights and a little bit of that faded blue look in my, in my shadows. And that looks great where it is. So let's uh, let's go back up now to our contrast. And I want to add my contrast back in now because it's kind of uh, the last step. You don't want to, uh, you know, if you 
increase the blacks and the contrast at the beginning, it's kind of difficult to choose uh, the, the different colors and where exactly you want those shadows to be at. So let's let's increase our contrast now. I'm not going to increase blacks yet because, again, I don't want to add too much uh, contrast, overall contrast to the image. If I add a lot of blacks, it's going to really crush the black channel and it's going to look, again, kind of like uh, not really a vintage image. It's going to have too much contrast to be very vintagey. So I want to just increase my contrast. And what I'm looking for is basically kind of that dark shadow, which has that blue hint in it, uh, that blue tone in it, in the pants, uh, the suit pants that he's wearing, the jeans in the background, just all the shadows in the image. Um, so I wanted to kind of have that I don't want it to be a deep black. See, if I increase my blacks, I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. If I increase my blacks, I'm, I'm bringing back too much contrast again, and we lose that vintage feel. Um, we get pure blacks, and I don't want pure blacks. I want those blue, faded blacks. All right, so I'm going to increase contrast about, to about right, maybe about 40, 39, 40-ish. And that looks really nice. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down my vibrance because I want the overall, uh, kind of the overall, colors in the image just to be a little bit more muted. So I'm going to pull down vibrance and uh, get it to about negative 20 and that's really nice. Already we're really close to the effect that we want to get. Let's add a few kind of final touches to this and uh, this is kind of optional whether you guys want to do it or not. I'm going to scroll all the way down to my effects panel. If you guys don't like grain or if you don't like vignetting it's kind of optional from here so you guys pick and choose what you like. But what we're going to do is, I, I like my images to be a little bit gritty, especially when I'm trying to do a vintage look. So I'm going to add some grain to it. I'm going to zoom in to see what it looks like. I want it to be kind of a very fine film grain. So I'm going to have it be at about 20 um, and just kind of turn it up quite a bit to about 60. And then from here, I want an actually kind of a, a heavier vignetting. And we've already done this lens vignette to kind of correct and brighten the edges of the image. Let's go and do some uh, post-crop vignetting using highlight priority because these edges are, are really bright. So I think we'll get an overall better look with a highlight priority, uh, priority post-crop vignette versus color. Although it's going to be very similar. Color and highlight, they almost work the same way. They're just some minor blending differences. So let's pull in the amount. And what I want to do is I want to bring back my midpoint so I'm not really covering up too much of his skin. So I want to just increase a little bit just to kind of give me a nice effect overall. I'm going to play with the roundness a little bit to give me a nice soft round edge and then also play with that feather to give me kind of a nice gradual fade. And then we can kind of tweak that a little bit more if I want to darken it up a little bit. Alright guys, I think that's about good. That's kind of where I want it. If I want, I can adjust my contrast up a tiny bit more, which I think I will do. I'll go up to about 55 um, and then maybe a tiny bit more fill light. And that's great. We have uh, created a vintage cross-process image. I'm going to save this now as a new snapshot. We're going to call this vintage cross-processed. Alright guys, so we're all done. Let's check out our color corrected version that we started with. And then here is the vintage cross-process look that we ended with. So you can see how we didn't really need to take this into Photoshop to create a really nice vintage cross-process look. I would recommend that you guys save this out as a preset so in the future whenever you want to create this effect you can do it in just a matter of seconds to any photo that you want. Alright, so great job guys. Hope you guys had fun with the tutorial. Be sure to uh, post your image in the comments of this article as well as on our Facebook page so we can see what kind of cool effects and styles you guys come up with using this technique on your own photos. See you guys.